<laughs> and patients and women have been fighting back tirelessly against that. You know, despite what you might see on TV, where Haitians look like charity cases, who are where, where black and brown people in, in so-called third world countries are made to look like they are they are charity recipients. They are fighting, and they've always been fighting, organizing for themselves. And they stand in solidarity with our fights and support us. I also want to say, too, that uh, in Haiti's most recent election, a few months ago in 2016, Haiti also had the opportunity to elect its first female president. Uh, not of the Hillary genre, let me just be very clear. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, one was for the people. I'll let you guess which one. Okay. Um, but... What happened is that our government, once again, subverted these efforts. And with every single election that's happened in Haiti, our government, Canada and France, have been there to subvert it, to overthrow it, to mess around in, in Haitians people fight for, for democracy and for autonomy. And so um, what I say today is that it's interesting the parallels that are now going on where Haiti is under occupation and dealing with authoritarian governments, and we are also dealing with an authoritarian uh, windbag, quite frankly, that we have to take on as well. So I say that to say and to wrap up, I really, I'm so honored to see everyone here because as we fight for what's going on in Oakland and for what's going on in the US, let's remember all of the struggles and our connectedness and everything that we share with the people of Haiti and the people throughout the world because we can learn so much from each other's struggles. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. All right, I want to thank you for sticking it out. And it's starting to get cold. We got two more really kick ass speakers, and then we're going for a walk. So.